thank you for everyone to for staying for you know the Saturday afternoon session. I'm not trying to rush off for a train or anything. Um, this session is LV4. In case some of you are in the wrong ones, um, title is Climate Change and Heritage Management: Measuring and Monitoring the Impacts of Future Climate and Environmental Change. So we're not just thinking about climate change, the environmental change associated with it, of the historic environment and cultural resources. Um, my name's Andy Howard, um, and I'm um, co-convener of this session with um, David Knight, who's in the audience over there, um, from Trenton Peak Archaeology, uh, Ben Geary, who's at the back from University College Cool, um, Shoot Kluvin from uh, Free University Amsterdam, who's over there, and Professor Thomas Rao from uh, Brandenburg Technical University over there. So just so you know who everyone is. Um, obviously, I'm just starting off with a, a very brief introduction to this. Um, I think we, we all know why we're here today, you know, predicted future scenarios of climate change um, based on a range of empirical evidence, but also supercomputer modelling. And I think, you know, modelling is an important point because models are not meant to be, you know, precise. Um, you know, they are models. Um, but, you know, if we think about the sort of parameters which atmospheric scientists are, are talking about, or well, we're talking about annual uh, temperature rises of two to three degrees by 2080s. There's going to be changes in the distribution magnitude and frequency of rainfall. And we've got backdrops of continued rise in relative sea levels. So we've got all these things going on. Um, I thought I'd just throw this in, you know, obviously there's a huge amount of debate which archaeologists are now part of and, and really sorting to develop in terms of thinking about things like the Anthropocene, how we define the Anthropocene, do we actually need to define the Anthropocene? You know, archaeologists have a, a primary role in this debate with the geological community, the, um, the Geological uh, Stratigraphic Commission is, is meeting, you know, as we speak and having a series of meetings as we speak where they're talking about these issues of defining you know new geological time periods so the Anthropocene is not the point of today but it's something to sort of bear in the back of the mind when thinking about these sorts of issues um, obviously I'm a rivers -y person so hence why we've got river slides you know the the impacts can be very visible and very disruptive for the built environment and as I say I like rivers as somebody said to me the other day at the, at the uh, reception, they said, you like rivers, don't you? <laughs> I like rivers too, he said, which was quite, which was quite worrying. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, so pictures of rivers, but, you know, obviously don't just think about flooding. Um, this is the River Severn in, in Western Britain and the Iron Bridge Gorge, the World Heritage Site, <coughs> obviously with temporary flood defences up. Um, also, it's not just about structures, and, and you know, I think we've got to bear that in the mix. Um, this is one of these rapid response catchments, which the Natural Environment Research Council has defined. Basically, steep catchments, if you get a convective storm, sits over that catchment for long periods of time, dumps loads of rain, like Boscastle, you get dramatic effects in terms of sediment erosion, sediment redistribution. But it's not just about you know, the geomorphological environment, it's about museums' environments, it's about humidity, it's about pests. It's about all sorts. These are just some of my pet subjects. Um, the heritage community, well, how have we responded? Um, you know, there, in the last sort of decade, there has been a huge burgeoning of literature, um, you know, produced by the heritage community, um, thinking about these issues of, of climate change. And I think we're going to hear about some of this policy in the first part of this session today. Um, so, you know, there is information out there and there's very high quality information out there. Um, how did this session come about? Well, this came initially from a, a conversation myself and David Knight had with English Heritage, Historic England as they now are, um, and out of a project we did for them which was all about uh, better disaster planning and building resilience to heritage. Um, I think it's, it's fair to say that climate change and heritage is often seen as a, as a bit of a niche activity by the wider archaeological community, and particularly you know, initially driven by environmental archaeologists largely. So I think, you know, the aims of this session really at EAA are to promote this research more widely 
um, to highlight methodologies and best practice through a range of studies and really to identify synergies, opportunities and think about interdisciplinarity. So I think that is very, very important. So I'm going to leave that introduction there. I'm now going to hand over to Thomas, who is going to chair the session. Um, and I final plea really, which is that we are the, the afternoon session, so therefore can speakers keep to time and, and Thomas will be, will be chairing you know, strictly this afternoon. So thank you very much.